Good day everyone, Warfly Squad. Welcome back to another Thursday trip report. I'm at Heathrow Terminal 2, just outside the tube station. Today I'm flying Scandinavian Airlines, SAS, A320neo from Heathrow to Oslo. Um, it's part of my journey back to Australia. So now, without further ado, let's uh, walk to Terminal 2 and check in. It's chaos and madness today at Terminal 2. So many people are flying out this morning. You have clearly some very frustrated customers who worry about missing their flights. There are lines everywhere, I don't even know where to start. Just as I thought I could whiz through the priority check-in lane with my sidelines gold, I'm actually in the priority lane right now. It's very slow moving and long. Within the next two hours, you have at least three SAS flights to Oslo, Copenhagen and Stockholm. It's pure chaos here as well. At 6am, you have staff yelling, 6.40 to Stockholm, come forward now! But with the current understaffing issue at Heathrow Airport, the check-in staff did their very best here. I reckon the crowd and line management was actually well done here. It was chaotic, but managed and well looked after. After that, I went to the Sarah Lines Gold Fast Track Security. I was in the ESI within 5 minutes. Here's a quick overview of the gorgeous Queen's Terminal. I have less than 15 minutes before my flight starts boarding, so I'm going to go straight to the Lufthansa Lounge, check it out and then board my flight to Oslo. So Lufthansa has two lounges here, the Business Class Lounge and a Senator Lounge within the Business Class Lounge. If you hold a Business Class ticket, you're only entitled for the Business Class Lounge. If you've got Star Lions Gold, you'll be given this paper receipt to scan through the Senator Lounge. Obviously given the setup here, Senator Lounge is the better one here. It's interesting how different airlines within the same alliance treat their frequent flies differently. Lufthansa obviously treat their frequent flies better than business class customers at the airport. At Heathrow Airport for example, you can use the first class check-in if your Star Alliance Gold. On the other hand, with Singapore Airlines at Changi Airport, with your Star Alliance Gold you can use only the Premium Economy check-in and for the lounge you get the Chris Gold Lounge which is actually not as good as the business class lounge. So at the Senator Lounge at Heathrow Airport, you've got great buffet options and coffee machine. Alcohol is available already in the morning. I think the only thing missing is Burris to make coffee. I left within 10 minutes to board our flight to Oslo. For some reason, there's no zone or priority boarding here. So it's painfully slow because they're boarding the whole plane at once and they didn't open the self-scanning machines. That lady was a bit rude, wasn't she? This is absolutely absurd. This is going to be a very full flight. They're weighing everyone's carry-on baggage, and they did actually charge some people at a gate last minute because their bags are too heavy. Our aircraft today is operated by SAS Ireland or SAS Connect with London Heathrow Base Crew. Hello, Hello you're right. Hi there. Yeah, good, thanks. Welcome on board SAS A320neo. We're walking past business class. We're now in the economy. My seat today is 12F, an emergency exit seat with plenty of leg room. The engine humming is low key annoying and good at the same time. Now for the seat features, we've got no cock hook, a USB port right in front of you, you can store your literature there, your tray table can't be folded in half but you can certainly move it back and forth. You've got a seat pocket for your personal items, I put my headphone case and my passport there. Leg room is enormous in the emergency row, I got this seat free of charge at check-in. No headrest unfortunately. Picture there just show you how to do so. Hello, Gardner. My name is Dale Crosby. I'm your captain for this flight. Joining me on the flight deck, Senior First Officer Anthony Bacon. Andrew will be flying you over to Oslo, and I'm sure he will update you with the weather and uh, the arrival time shortly before descent. First of all, may I apologise for the uh, slightly delayed departure? Uh, we have picked up an air traffic control slot time which is in approximately five minutes time so we wouldn't be able to move before that point anyway uh, however we do also have three passengers who are still waiting to uh, we're still waiting to board the airplane and there's still a little bit of loading going on in the cargo hold so as soon as that is completed then uh, we'll get you underway towards you when we do get underway, looking after you in the cabin will be Alexa and the team. 
They will be giving you a demonstration of the safety features of this airplane as we get underway. Now, please ask that you extend them to the courtesy of paying them your full attention during that safety demonstration as the crew are there primarily for your safety as well as your comfort. I'll leave you in the very capable hands of Alexa and the team and we'll get you underway just as quickly as we can. Thank you. Push back today is half an hour late, but I'm so glad we're underway now. If you're new to my channel, I'm so glad you made it to this video. I upload a new video every Monday and Thursday, so be sure to click that subscribe and bell button so you won't miss out on another trip report like this one. Thank you so very much. The in-flight service in SAS Go began shortly after takeoff. Coffee, tea, water, complimentary. You'll have to pay for other drinks and food. A customer sitting at the front wanted to purchase a food or drink item, but they left the wallet in the overlocker bin. The crew was kind enough to reach it out for them. I decided to not purchase for anything but opted for a cup of tea. After everyone got their coffee, tea and water, the flight purser decided to come back to give out even more coffee and tea. That's really nice of her, I really appreciated that. Thank you. Space, uh, we'll be starting our descent into Boston. 
We'll soon be landing into Oslo Airport, so let's quickly conclude this trip report with SAS right here, right now. Our journey today started at Terminal 2. It was really busy and chaotic, but it was well managed. The Lufthansa Senator Lounge was pretty good, alcohol available in the morning, and hot breakfast food options were excellent. I didn't like the boarding process for our flight at all. First things first, there was no priority boarding or zone boarding. If I paid for a business class ticket, I wouldn't be too happy. We were also given the wrong information at the flight display board. It was saying SK802 to Oslo, flight closing as in final call, so I ran to the gate only to find that boarding hadn't even started. The gate staff were also quite rude to the customers. It certainly didn't help for those who had to pay for the extra baggage allowance. They were like fuming. Once aboard, things got a lot better, nice cabin crew, relatively comfortable and new seat, excellent leg room at the emergency exit row, we got a USB port and a very clean cabin. The A320 Neo mood lighting along with the wooden wall at the front gave this cabin a very fresh and modern feeling. On this flight in SAS GO as in economy class you get free coffee, tea and water, snacks and drinks for purchase just like Virgin Australia in Australia. And again the cabin crew today were really nice, I really appreciated the purser for giving out coffee and tea for another round. Lastly, for your in-flight entertainment, there was no in-flight magazine physically, but you can connect to the Wi-Fi. Cabin crew to station for cabin security check. So connect to the in-flight Wi-Fi on board and then open the web portal. You can read your magazine there for free. For web browsing, you can pay for internet access. I actually had some SAS miles, which I would never use anyway, so I purchased the Wi-Fi and I was able to text my friends and post something on Instagram stories. Now for your information, flying London Heathrow to Oslo, you have two options, BA or SAS. BA flies about four times daily, SAS about five times daily. BA basic economy starts from about £47, SAS is £66. If you're under the age of 26, you can purchase a youth fare on SAS. You get about 20 to 25% off and that's exactly what I did. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. If you do, please leave a like and comment down below and share this video with your friends. And please, please, please subscribe if you haven't done so. Each and every of your action will help the growth of my channel. You can keep up to date with me on my social media platforms like Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook and Be Real. If you want to go above and beyond in funding my flights, you can do so via Patreon or PayPal. Please visit the links in the description for more information. Now please enjoy the approach and landing into Oslo Airport. My connecting flight on Turkish to Istanbul has been uploaded. You can find the trip report link in the description. And after disembarking this flight, I'll do a Q&A. See you there. Bye bye.
about bar symptoms, keep your seat back and table upright and the aisle and emergency exit free and cabin back into a tunnel bar and sleep on time as we switch to off. Please be careful when opening overhead compartments to prevent baggage from falling out. Before leaving the aircraft, please check that you haven't forgotten anything on board. When disembarking, please observe the possible difference in level between the aircraft and the gate bridge. Outdoors at cross check. Good day, one more fly squad. Welcome back to another QA. Thank you so much for watching my SAS report. I hope you enjoyed that video. So today I'm going to do a rather long Q&A because I feel like it. It's half past three in the morning, so why not? So question one, um, what's the craziest thing you've done on the plane? Um, actually I actually have a story to tell. I don't think I've told you guys before. So there was one time I was flying Qantas Brisbane to Adelaide, sitting at 1F business class. My neighbour sitting at 1D, aisle seat, she was a um, British lady who used to live in Hong Kong and now she lives in Adelaide. So we had quite a lot of things in common and for the whole three hour flight from uh, Brisbane to Hong Kong, we chatted non-stop and she's actually an old lady so I had to raise my voice quite a few times. Uh, that time I was flying with my friend but he was sitting at 3A, so the other side of business class. And after landing, he told me that, um, when we disembarked, he told me that he heard our conversation throughout the whole flight. I was like, oh my God, that was so embarrassing. Like, so, like I was like a very loud American for that flight and I felt so guilty about it. Question two, your top three favourite airports? Definitely Hong Kong Airport because I like how high the ceiling is. I like London Heathrow because the lounges are amazing. Number three, I would say out of the ones I've been to, I don't know. Um, maybe Adelaide Airport for being small but beautiful and uh, it just looks so much better than any uh, Australian airports. Next question. Um, when are you going to Hawaii? I'm not sure yet, hopefully soon. Um, it's a bit tricky to get there from Hong Kong and I mean there's direct flights from Australia but they're usually very expensive compared to going to mainland America like LA. Next question. What's the coolest flight you've done, uh, you've been on, and why? I think the coolest flights would have been on the ones where cabin crew or even passengers recognise me. So, like, um, when the crew give me freebies, it's always so cool, and I really appreciate that. Um, how do you plan your itineraries, Google Flights, miles? Um, I usually do look at Google Flights, um, for example, I, just, I actually just booked a trip from Hong Kong to Europe and uh, flying to Heathrow or Paris or basically anywhere else in Europe, it would have cost me uh, four or five grand Hong Kong dollars return. But then I used Google Flight Explore function and found that Flying into Berlin, I would save about 1200 Hong Kong dollars, which is about 200 Aussie dollars. So with that 200 Aussie dollars, if I wanted to explore other parts of Europe, I could easily do so. Flying Ryanair for $20 or taking a train for, I don't know, $50, say. Yeah, the explore function is really good if you're looking for a trip and you're flexible. 
Next question, what airline do you think has the best flight attendants and crew? Look, um, it's really down to that, you know, individual, not really up to that airline. Uh, I like crew who are down to earth and energetic and it is common that on some airlines you tend to have more of that kind of crew like uh, Virgin Australia for example uh, they're always very en energetic and fun um, British Airways they're always very enthusiastic um, very polite and nice uh, do you sightsee at all your destinations or is it all about the, uh, the journey? Um, it's both actually. For example, again, the trip I just planned going to uh, Europe. Um, I'm going to end up going to Berlin first, which I've never been. And uh, it's only because it's the cheapest place in Europe to fly to from Hong Kong. So it's kind of about the journey because it's the cheapest, um, but also... Because of that reason, I get to explore new destination, which I like as well, part of uh, being a YouTuber. How do you find the deals when you fly business overseas? I rarely fly business class. Um, if I do, it's usually by points. But I'm actually really tempted right now to book a trip from Europe to America as part of that uh, trip from Hong Kong to Europe. Um, because um, I just saw a deal from Milan to New York JFK, Flying One World, so British Airways, uh, Iberia or American, it would cost only 1,300 euros return. Um, and it has to be Milan, so if you do Berlin to JFK, it, it will cost more than double, like 2,006 or 7 euros. So um, how did I find that? Um, again, Google Flight Explorer, I was looking through all different origins in Europe and look for uh, business class deals going to uh, North America and JFK or the East Coast, America in general happen to be the cheapest for obvious reasons, it's closer. Um, but then also signing up to different newsletters about flights and deals, uh, there's a lot um, on the internet. Any plans to fly United Island Hopper between Honolulu and Guam? No plans yet, but I do want to. Um, there's a very similar type of journey in Australia. I think it's called the Milk Run with uh, Rex Airline. But to be honest, I'd rather do the uh, Island Hopper. It just sounds more fun, like uh, island rather than country to country to country towns. Do you collect models? I certainly do. I may or may not have shown you my collection. So here you go. Just four planes, not too much. Next question. Let me drink some tea, I'm so thirsty. I'm drinking chamomile with uh, honey. Mm. What are you doing at aviation school? Uh, so I never really went to a aviation, aviation school. I went to a university which offers aviation degrees and I did management. So it's more about the business side of things and more about, you know, uh, not, not, not necessarily just business, but also safety, um, human factors like psychology. Yeah, so that's what I did. And I finished that degree last year. What does it feel being a one world flyer? I like it. Um, it feels great. Um, sometimes people ask if I get tired filming or do I get bored filming on a flight. To me, that's kind of a in-flight entertainment. You know, when you fly so much, you want to entertain yourself. Like some people do it by um, sleeping. Some people download Netflix before, before their flight. And I occupy myself when I fly by... Uh, doing my videos. I think that's the last question, yeah. Uh, how do you maintain your tier? Um, I maintain my Virgin Australia and my Qantas tier by obviously sticking with them, fly a lot with them with their partner airlines as well. I think 
one tip I could give is that um, choose an airline within any of the uh, big three alliances and then obviously try to stick with that particular airline as much as possible because they're going to be the one who give you the most miles or points when you fly with them but also choose out of that alliance you know out of all the airlines in that particular alliance choose the one with the most partner airlines outside of the alliance for example Qantas it's one world so within all the one world airlines I would choose Qantas on top of any other partner airlines within one world but also Qantas for example is a good one I reckon because they also have partnership with KLM, Air France, uh, um, MREX, um, who else? I don't know, I can't think on top of my head. China Airlines from Taiwan. So, um, choosing airlines within your alliance who also has partnerships outside of that alliance help you maintain your tier, like you get more network and coverage, if you know what I mean. <laughs> like Cathay Pacific, uh, it's one world but they have partnerships with um, Lufthansa, Swiss, Austria, Air New Zealand, you know, and then Virgin Atlantic. Um, I don't know if they still do, but they have partnerships with uh, Ornipon Airways, Singapore Airlines, blah, blah, blah. So, um, yeah, if you, if you get what I mean, you get what I mean. So, uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next week. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Boston. For your safety, please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened and your cabin baggage stowed until the seatbelt sign has been turned off.